OK. The next thing we're going to be thinking about is some of this general kind of theory that we have to do with functions. But before we learn about functions, we want to learn about something that is slightly more general, which is called a mapping. So a function is a specific type of a mapping. But first of all, we need to know what is a mapping. Um, this is kind of some like background theory of, of maths that we're going to be looking at here. So it says, a mapping is something which maps one set of numbers to another. And it can be done in all sorts of ways. So the mapping might be completely arbitrary. In this case here, I've decided to map 0 to 4.4 and 7.2 for no real reason. It's just a random way that I've decided to map one number to another. Or the mapping might have some underlying rule. For example, you might take the original number and you might multiply it by 2. Okay? That might be one of the ideas that you might do for a, a mapping that you have. Also notice that for mappings, one input might map to multiple outputs. So you can see here 0 is mapping to 4.4 and 7.2. In a mapping, it can do whatever it likes. right? And for a function, that's not going to be true. For a function, we're going to put some rules on this. Or you might also see that multiple inputs um, Sorry, I've got an input might map to multiple outputs or multiple inputs to one output. So you can see here, um, 0 and 3.1 are both going to 7.2. So that's fine. Mappings can basically do whatever they like. But the thing that's going to be the, the thing you'll use the most from this slide is this language that I've written down here. Okay? There's some new language that we're going to be using in this topic, and it's that the domain is the possible inputs. Okay? which is usually going to be then the inputs out of our x and y when we have graphs? x, OK. So x is basically the domain. This is a new word that we will be using to describe what the input values are for a particular graph or a particular function. So domain needs to go into your memory of meaning the input values or the x values. The range is the set of possible outputs Okay, for a particular thing that might be happening. So it's your x values and your y values. We're going to start using domain and range because it becomes more sophisticated language. So that's what a mapping is. And I just said a function is a type of mapping. But a function has a very particular rule that makes something a function. So a function is a mapping such that every element of the domain of the inputs is mapped to exactly one element of the range. Exactly one element of the range. Meaning that something in the input is not allowed to go to 2. So if we have a quick look back at this mapping, this mapping is not a function. Why is this mapping not a function? Yeah, because, because the zero has two outputs. Okay, that means that it is illegal and it is not allowed to be a mapping, uh, not allowed to be a function because the zero is going to two values. This is okay that two values are going to seven point two. That would be okay because it doesn't say anything about that in our definition of a function. The only thing is it says is that each element of the domain must go to exactly one. Okay. It can't go to no values, and it also can't go to two or three values. It can, has to go to one. So this is how you might see functions. Well, we've already seen functions written like this. So x is the, do, is the domain. f of x is the range, the output. You may sometimes see it with a colon instead of the brackets around x as well. I don't think we've seen much of that so far, but it's just other ways that you might see something like this. Okay. So I've said here that we can illustrate a mapping or a function graphically by plotting a point x, y if x maps to y. We know this already. And for this reason, we say that y is f of x, meaning that y is the output of the function. Nothing really new there. That's just stuff that we already know about how this works. So we're going to try and think, is this particular graph that I've got here a function? Now, I want you to just quickly talk to the person next to you. Just from this, direction, uh, from this definition, does every input value go to exactly one output value? 
see if you can decide with somebody next to you whether you think this definition would apply to this graph and it would be a function. I'll just give you 20 or 30 seconds. If you're not sure, just have a little guess. See if you can think what it could be. Okay, this is a difficult question for me to have asked to you when we haven't really done an awful lot about this. So the input values are all along here. And we're going to see if all of the input values go to exactly one output value. So for example, this input value goes to just one output value. This one also just gives me one output value. All of them, as I go up, they all hit the line in one place, which means that every x value that I'm putting in here is leading to just one y value. Does that mean it fits the definition? Yes, that means it fits the definition. And I've written here what I've done. I've said you can use this vertical ray test. So these are my vertical rays that I've drawn. If a vertically fired ray can hit the curve multiple times, then it's not a function because it's then got two output values, right? So this one is a function. Every input value along the x-axis is firing off to one single output value. And really, this, this is in A-level because it's, it has a, lit, a small application later on. Um, but we're really just going to be learning this definition and making sure we can apply this definition. So we're going to try and look at some other functions on the next page and trying to decide whether they are functions or not as well. And there's some tricky ones here to think about. But if we can understand these, we, real, we will have understood what it means to be a function. So this one is separate to this. Okay, These are not linked to each other. So this one, we have the graph is y equals 2 to the power of x. And I'm saying that the domain, the input values, is all of the real numbers. So usually, if you want to figure out if something is a function, it's going to be useful to draw a graph. Does anyone remember what a 2 to the x graph looks like? Arifal? Yeah, it looks like this. It looks like an e to the x graph. It's an exponential graph, OK? So by looking at that, do we think that's going to be a function? Yes. Every single value is just going to apply and give you one output value. So yes, it is indeed a function that we've got here. Okay. Now, this one that I've got, um, it doesn't really matter what this, this graph is. I just want to decide whether we think this might be a function or not. Someone's nodding their head and saying that it's not a function. Why do you think they might be saying this is not a function? They're correct that this is not a function. Why is this not a function? Yeah, exactly. This input value gives this output value, but it also gives this output value. And our definition said it can only go to exactly one element of the range. So this is not a function. What have I got written under here? So for each value of x except 0, because 0 actually only goes to one of the values here, we get two values of y. So this is a one-to-many mapping. So if you could write that down, that this is a one-to-many mapping, because you have one thing that is going to many things, which means that it's not a function. One to many, not a function.
If this one is called a one-to-many mapping, what kind of mapping do we think this first one is? Good, it's a one-to-one -one mapping. One-to-one -one mapping, function. One-to-many, not a function. OK, we've got two more functions to talk about that will illustrate some points here. So this time we have got that the function is the square root of x. See how this one is different, though? This one down at the bottom has got positive and negative. This one is just the square root of x. And the domain is that x is a member of the real numbers. I'm not sure if you've seen this before. This is x is a member of, you do a capital R with a line through it, the real numbers. It just means any uh, real numbers are anything from negative to in negative infinity to positive infinity and everything in between, OK? This means. What do we think? Does this make it a function or? Not. Pardon? You think it is a function and you think it isn't a function? You think it is a function. Well, tell me why you think it is a function. Because So the graph, because it's just the positive part of the square root graph, the positive part of the square root graph looks like this. OK, and I'm just going to quickly show you that on Desmos. So this part of it looks like it will be a one-to-one -one function. But Ishraq just said something. What did you say? Yeah, and look what it says here. The domain is saying that x is allowed to be any number at all. But remember the definition. Every input value maps to exactly one output value. So this one is not a function. And the reason it is not a function is because of the domain. Because some of those input values, the negative ones, aren't mapping anywhere. And they have to map to exactly one place. So I've written some of that here. Because we can't square root a negative number, the input set is R. So some inputs don't map to a value. So this one is not a function because of the domain. So the domain has to be, it's, it's basically just like a, a very formal way of how we write things in maths. We want to make sure everything I'm allowed to put into this function is going to go to exactly one thing. And as long as that happens, we've got a function. So if I wanted to change the domain, what could I change the domain to that would make this become a function? Greater than zero, or greater than, or possibly even greater than or equal to zero, or greater than five or greater than 100, because anything greater than 100 would also work. It just wouldn't look like the same graph. There'd be a part of the graph missing. But it would still be a function, because we've restricted what it could be. So we've got this last one down here. This time I've changed the domain, so that the domain is only allowed to put positive numbers into here. But is this one going to be a function? No? Why not? Good, because it says it can be a positive or a negative. So one value is now going to go to two outputs. It's actually going to look really similar to this graph that we've got up here. So for the exact same reasons of this going to two values, this is going to be a one-to-many mapping. And a one-to-many mapping is not a function. So this is, pardon? But there's something different about this one. We're saying that there's when you take the square root, that you get the positive and the negative of it. So instead of the graph looking like this, the graph would look like, whoops, the graph would look like this because of the positive and the negative, which means that one input is going to have two outputs. So it wouldn't be a function. So I was kind of annoying there. I made this one not a function because of the domain. And I made this one not a function because of the way that it was written. So I'll just say what we've got in here. 
So for example, if you put 4 into this, you do the square root of 4, you would get 2, but you could also get minus 2 as well. So it's another one-to-many function, so it is not a function. There's a lot of strange definitions here, but that thing I've got written in green and red, if you can memorize that, what a function is, the definition is actually quite easy. So we're just going to have a look at a few more of these, and then we'll wrap it up for today's lesson, because it's been quite a, quite a full-on lesson. Can I go on to the next bit? Yep. So we're just going to have a quick discussion about a couple of different things here. So we've got one-to-one -one functions versus many-to-one. We haven't talked about many-to-one functions where you can have several inputs going to one output. Several inputs going to one output is a function because the only thing for a function is that each input has to go to exactly one output. So while functions permit an input only to be mapped to one output, there's nothing stopping multiple different inputs mapping to the same output, as long as they're only going to one output. So I just thought I'd kind of illustrate what these might look like. You can have this as an example of a many-to-one function. So multiple inputs can map to the same output. So here I've got 2 and minus 2, both mapping to 4. This is a function. The function is f of x equals x squared, because when I put these into the squaring, you come up with the same output. So in this case, to check if it is a many-to-one function, you can use the horizontal ray test to see if the function is one-to-one -one or many-to-one. So in this case here, we can tell that there are many values that go to one value. So that's why this function is a many-to-one. And you can look at that by seeing this horizontal line here where it's crossing in two places that's telling me there are two input values that will go to the same one. So the kind of thing that might pop up, it will be like a one-mark question. They might say, is this a many-to-one function, a one-to-one function, or a blah-blah-blah function? And you just need to be able to think carefully about that. Obviously, a one-to-one -one function is where each output has one input and vice versa. So a very simple one like f of x equals 2x plus 1. Again, if you think about what that looks like as a sketch, there's only ever going to be um, one input going to one output, and the output is only ever going to correspond to one input, hence it being a one-to-one -one kind of thing that we've got there. OK, I think we will probably then start the next lesson by having a think about what these look like, OK? Because we've done a lot of the theory there.